So before Grice presents his own view of natural, non-natural meaning on a particular occasion, he goes through a few other possible views that you might have and gives some counterexamples to them. The counterexamples are interesting and they're worth spending some time on because there is a particular moral that we should draw from them. And the moral is basically that to non-naturally mean something involves more than just tending people to believe that that thing is the case. So for the three rings on the bus to mean that the bus is full, that's, that says more than just ringing the bell three times tends to cause people to believe that the bus is full. What's kind of missing from that, that picture, that it's just causing beliefs, is some sort of mutual recognition of that's what people are trying to do. And that's what the counterexamples bring out, and that's what Grice then tries to address in giving his own view. So the first view we'll look at is a very straightforward one, the causal view, I'll call it. And the causal view just says this. If you have an utterance, you, well that non-naturally means that P, just in case the utterance tends to cause people to believe that P. So basically the idea is your utterance non-naturally means something if it, ten, if, it, if it should or it tends to cause people to believe whatever it is that you want it to mean by that utterance. Now that seems kind of plausible at first because it certainly is the case that when we say things, at least when we say what we call declarative sentences, we want people to believe things. We want to, we want to bring about a belief in other people. The problem is that while may, that's maybe necessary, it really doesn't seem anything like sufficient. So these counterexamples are going to be saying, well, there are some cases where something causes people to believe something, but the utterance doesn't intuitively mean that thing. It's a case of causing beliefs without meaning. That's, what the, that's how the examples are going to work. And the examples are pretty easy to come up with once you get the, get the flavor of them. So here's one example that Bryce gives. So if I put on a tailcoat, that will tend to cause you to believe that I'm going to some sort of formal event, maybe like a ball or a dinner or something like that. Because that's what people do when they go to um, formal dinners. They put on tailcoats and things like that. And they don't tend to wear them in a, really any other situation, for the most part. So if I put on a tailcoat, that will tend to cause you to believe that I'm going to some formal occasion. But does putting on a, ton, a table coat non-naturally mean that I'm going to that occasion? For instance, am I, is, is that something that I'm trying to say to someone in particular by putting on the tail coat? Intuitively, no. I may have no feelings at all about whether I want anyone to, to come to believe this, whether I want to communicate it or not. And for that reason, it doesn't seem like I mean something by putting on the tail coat. That's one example, the tail coat. So putting on a tail coat will tend to cause people to have certain beliefs about what you're going to do. It doesn't seem to necessarily mean that that's what you're going to do. Another kind of example happens when people will be able to conclude certain things from what you've said that you didn't necessarily mean to communicate. So for, ex for example, basketball players are generally known to be pretty tall people. So if I tell you that Alice is a basketball player, that will tend to cause you to believe that Alice is tall. But do I necessarily mean that Alice is tall on any particular occasion when I say that she's a basketball player? Not necessarily. If we're having a conversation about basketball, about strategy in basketball, about how, 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 we, how you should run a basketball team, I might, I might say that Alice is a basketball player really because I'm thinking we should ask her. She has the expertise. She maybe has the expertise that we need to settle our question. In a context like that, whether or not she's tall is kind of irrelevant to the question that we're discussing. So it doesn't really seem very intuitive to think that I, in addition to saying that she's a basketball player, I'm also saying, or I'm also meaning that she's tall. That's just a, a, an irrelevant consequence of something that I've said on this occasion. So again, this is another kind of case where I've said something that will tend to cause you to believe something. So I've said that Alice, Alice is a basketball player. That will tend to cause you to believe that she's tall. But, it doesn't necessarily, but that doesn't necessarily mean that any time I say that Alice is a basketball player, I also mean that she's tall. Because whether or not she's tall could be completely irrelevant on a particular occasion, and not the kind of thing that I'd be interested in saying. So those are both counterexamples to the sufficiency direction. Examples of utterances which tend to cause people to believe things, without, even though they don't mean that thing. Now it's very important that we are clear here that 
it's not a non-natural meaning and not natural meaning that we have in mind here, especially for the first case. Because you might think, like, isn't there a sense in which tailcoats does mean a formal occasion? And that might be right, but what Grice would want to say is that it naturally means a formal occasion, in the sense that if you saw me wearing a tailcoat, that would be very good evidence that I'm going to a dinner party or a formal occasion of some kind. But it's not necessarily an attempt by me to communicate something or to say that something is the case or, or say anything at all. And that's why it, intuitively it's not a case of non-natural meaning. So this is one case where it really is important to make the distinction be, and, and be clear that it's non-natural meaning that we're interested in. So that's the first view disposed of. Here's the causal view. We've seen two counterexamples to it and both of them go in the sufficiency direction. Now, if you think about both of the examples I gave, one thing that's missing in both cases is an intention to communicate the relevant thing. In both of our cases, we say something which tends to cause people to have a certain kind of belief, but we, but we don't say that with the intention for them to believe it. So if I put on a tailcoat, that will tend to cause you to believe I'm going to a formal dinner. I may have no intention at all for you to believe that, and that seems closely connected to the reason why it doesn't naturally mean something. Likewise with the basketball exa player example, saying that Alice is a basketball player will naturally tend to cause you to conclude that she's tall, but in the example I gave, I clearly had no intention for you to come to that conclusion. Now, I didn't necessarily intend the opposite, I just didn't care. It's not something I had any intention about one way or the other. And so a natural idea is, well, maybe what's wrong with an account like this is that we need to get some intentions into the picture somehow. And broadly speaking, Grice thinks that's right. We actually do need intentions in it somewhere, but we're going to need something more complicated than the very first version of that, he thinks. So let's first see the, the simplest version of an intentional account of non-natural meaning. So here's the simple intentional view, which I think Grice would think is a step in the right direction. So with the simple intentional view says that you non-naturally mean that he, by doing some particular thing, just in case you intend your audience to believe P because you did X. So let's think to back to our original examples of non-natural meaning. So think about the yelling in when the stove is on fire. This account would say, well, you non-naturally mean that the stove is on fire by screaming because you intended your audience to believe that the stove is on fire because you did the screaming. And if you think about it in that case, it looks kind of, it looks like it's getting things right. If you think about the stove case, it's exactly right that my int the intention of screaming was to, was to make the person have that kind of belief. Now it also seems right that this doesn't have the same counterexamples as the causal view. Because remember, as we said with the causal view, the reason those examples were problems for it because because there wasn't any intention to communicate something. I don't intend to communicate necessarily that I'm going to a ball whenever I put on a tailcoat. Likewise, I don't necessarily always intend to communicate that Alice is tall whenever I say she's a basketball player. So here we don't get the result that those are things that you meant, precisely because you lack the intention in the first place. However, there still are counterexamples to this simple intentional account. And the counterexamples arise because all this says is that I have to have an intention to make you believe something. But it doesn't say anything about whether you're required to recognize my intention. And if we think about cases where I intend for you to believe something, but I also intend that you don't discover that sort of I'm the source of your belief, those don't look like cases of non-natural meaning. These are cases basically where you're trying to manipulate somebody, somebody into believing something without, knowing, without them knowing that you're the one doing the manipulating. So here's a kind of example that comes from Grice. Imagine you have this handkerchief that is monogrammed with your initials, and, and this is well known. People, people know that you carry this handkerchief. Suppose I steal that, and suppose I, having committed a crime, I leave your handkerchief at the, say, at the scene of the crime. Now, why have I done that? Well, the reason I've done that is because it's common knowledge that this is your handkerchief, the one, this handkerchief with your initials on it. So I know that by leaving your handkerchief at the scene of the crime, that will tend to mislead the detective into believing that you're the criminal, because it will be, ev you know, it will be evidence that you were there. So I, I intend for the detective to believe that you're the criminal. That's what I'm doing. That's one thing I'm intending to happen by leaving your handkerchief at the scene of the crime. 
But let's ask ourselves, is this a case of non-natural meaning? Is this a case where, intuitively, I meant to say something by leaving something at the scene of the crime? And it looks like the answer is no. It's true that I intended for the detective to believe something by leaving this handkerchief at the scene of the crime. But I don't mean that you are the criminal by leaving it there. I'm not saying that you are the criminal by leaving, by, by leaving it there. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to manipulate somebody into believing something. But that's not the same thing as meaning something. It's not the same thing as not naturally meaning something on a particular occasion. So again, this is a counterexample to the sufficiency direction of the analysis. It's a case where you intend your audience, here the detective, to believe something, namely that you are the criminal. That's something I intend by, doing, by leaving the handkerchief at the scene of the crime. But it doesn't look like I non naturally mean that you are the criminal by doing that. Now, what's missing from that example, obviously, is that the detective isn't aware of my intention there. So we might try to complicate the analysis a bit further by adding in that intention. What happens if we make this, the account slightly more complicated and add in that not only must I intend something, I must all, it also must be that I intend for the person to recognize that I have that intention. So this is a slightly more complicated version of the intentional view, which we'll look at now.